our population lives below the poverty In New Hampshire, our neighbor, similar population, 7.7%. They don't have any tax. Maine people deserve to have some prosperity. I do not believe that we as a state can tax ourselves into prosperity. I also don't believe that we can spend ourselves into prosperity. And that's the crux of the problem. It's the spending side. And I'll go over that a little bit. No civilized society has ever been able to tax and spend itself into a prosperous society. In fact, I believe we must reduce our tax burden on hard working men families. And I have tried to for two years now. And I will try for two more years. I will keep bringing back the bills that are necessary to get this economy going. Now let me give you a little story. Marco Foods, great company in Florida, was sold. Sold to a company out of Oklahoma. What's the first thing they did? They moved the line to Oklahoma. Because here in Maine, the electricity cost is 12.6 cents per kilowatt hour. In Oklahoma, four, uh, six cents per kilowatt hour. It's that simple. And that's six and a half cents right to the bottom line. Right to the bottom line. We have a company here in Maine who's paid for it. Who gets a contract from the state that is significantly above what we are currently paying for electricity. In fact, over the life of the contract, they're going to get $35 million above what we currently pay. But when I put up some legislation, they fought it. They had their lobbyists just battling me all the way. So on Good Friday, I had the lobbyists in my office. And this is what I told them. Folks, today is Good Friday. Enjoy your lunch, because it's not last one. I am done working with companies that are all about greed, all about themselves. Providing tax relief of two thirds of Maine's taxpayers last year. 70,000 families in the state of Maine no longer pay income tax because they're at or below the poverty level. We reduced the top rate from 8.5% to 7.95%. We eliminated the 2% rate. And that is considered for us. Tax breaks for the rich. <laughs> of course, if you make $20,000 in the state of Maine, you will pay the maximum rent. So I'm just after those really big companies. <laughs> we reduce the marriage, we reduce the marriage penalty and increase the debt tax from one million to two million. Now, in the state of Maine, we have something like 40,000 companies. The average company has 10 or less employees. There's about 100 companies that are big, big corporations. And we are trying to save the young, uh, the, the young family business where the son has grown up. He either wants to take over the farm, or he wants to take over the boat down on the coast, or he wants to take over a couple of skidders, but it's more than a million dollar asset, and therefore they have to get out of the business so they can pay the tax. That's really what Maine's all about. We are an employer of small business. We have to keep our small business people working, otherwise they will leave. 
I was in New York earlier in the week. It's just amazing. Uh, there's a group that has uh, done an analysis of the entire country, and they're showing uh, on the map. You, you just go to this large map, you hit the state of Maine, and it tells you where all the people are leaving the state, where they're moving to, and all the people that are moving into the state. It was very fascinating. We have some people moving to Maine from New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. We have a lot of people leaving Maine to Nevada, Arizona, Florida, South Carolina, and New Hampshire. Now think about it. Every one of those states does not have an income tax. They're all right to work except one, and they will likely be right to work next January. And that's our neighbor to the south. Very critical that we become a competitive state nationally. We are not competitive, and if we don't become competitive, we are going to lose out even worse off than we are now. Lastly, we remove the automatic indexing on motor fuels. Think about it. We're paying four dollars a gallon. Last night in Fairfield, it was four dollars and twenty-two cents for diesel. Up north, they're paying four fifty and four sixty. It's just not right. Now, the governor of Alaska has told me, Paul. We produce 600,000 barrels of oil a day that we send down the pipeline. I have the capacity to put out 1.3 million barrels a day, but I can't get the, gov the government, the federal government, to give us a permit. Isn't that something? We have a pipeline that we could have put to the, to the, uh, the southwest in order to bring more crude oil from the North American continent, used in North America, not Middle East, but we said no. I'm telling you, we need to make changes in Washington. Introduced the main capital investment credit for $31 million to give immediate tax relief for investments made in Maine, creating and maintaining existing jobs. Maine small businesses can now depreciate a $500,000 investment immediately. We accepted sales tax on aircraft parts. Fuel tax on commercial fishing boats. We've changed Maine so that job creators can come to Maine and create good jobs for the future. Yeah. And believe me, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because despite the fact that we have a Republican governor, a Republican House, and a Republican Senate, Thank you. let me tell you this, in the House and the Senate, a lot of people say there's something that they're really not. <laughs> promises, they get to Augusta and they forget it. This year's an election year for the federal government and for the state. And I ask you all, whoever candidate you vote for, hold their feet to the fire. Make sure. Make sure that what they campaign on is what they're going to represent when they come to Augusta. Now, we have some here today. I see Heather Siraki. I see Senator Snow Mellow. These people are real patriots and
and real fighters. They really fight for Maine people. Beth O'Connor. Down. My staff said, do you trust them? Do you know them? Bring them on in, because they usually have some great ideas. Uh, it's so important for me, with what we're facing, to really move forward. Now, there's been this big battle on energy. And you must have heard this 100 megawatt limitation. Now in the state of Maine, we have a hundred megawatt limitation on all energy except for wind, because wind is renewable. It, it's fairly expensive, and those who are in the wind business make a lot of money. In fact, a, a, a a certain person who's running for the U.S. Senate said last week that the Republican Party has gone too far to the right. <laughs> Let me tell you what's happened. The same person has made a fortune off the backs of many people. This same person this same person is blocking, removing the 100 megawatts off hydroelectricity so that I can't go to Canada and buy electricity at five to six cents when you are all paying 7.9 cents standard offer today. That is a crime. That is absolutely Not only that, we can be the conduit to get hydro energy from the northern parts of Quebec all the way down to southern New England and get paid for transporting it so we can lower the cost of energy even further. But no, we're going to make hydro not a renewable energy. We're going to stay with wind at 20 cents, 15, 16, 17, as high as 23 cents with subsidies. And it's coming out of your pockets. In matter of fact, I did some work this morning, and I, it's important before I close that you really understand what's happening in Maine. I'm known as a person who hates wealth. Well, folks, I've been there. I came off the streets, I crossed the street. I worked on the corner where the mission is for years. Going to work at three in the morning, leaving at seven, going to high school, coming back at two o'clock or three o'clock and cleaning old muffin pans until five o'clock. Did it for years. This is what welfare is in Maine. The average person on welfare in the United States costs about $1,100 to the taxpayer every year. In the state of Maine, it's $1,961. Now, we have 345,000 people on welfare. Multiply that by 861, and you come up with $297 million. That we pay above the national average. That is six hundred. That's four hundred sixty-five dollars to every taxpayer in the state of Maine. Education. Education in Maine is costing all in federal money, state money, and local property taxes. It's costing us fourteen thousand dollars per student. The national average is 10000 Take $4,000 times 
times 185,000 students, and the state of Maine pays $740 million per year above the national average. Now, this is the results. 21% dropout rate, 54% of the kids that go on to community college in the state of Maine need remedial work, and 25% of the kids that go on to university system need remedial work. Folks, we're failing. It's not working. We put in some simple little legislation and you think I, I'm trying to compete with Iran with a nuclear bomb. <laughs> the Democrats were going nuts. And we lost. Because, as I, I say, as they tell me, is certain Republicans in Augusta live in communities with a lot of union members. Oh, now let, let me tell you this. One thing I learned, and I was reading it last night, it's about our Constitution. It's about a Declaration of Independence. 56 people from all walks of life, all around this 13 original colonies, gathered to tell the King of England that we've had, had enough. The issue is taxes. <clears throat> So what do we do? They wrote a declaration of independence. And it took courage because they all realized we're either going to hang alone or we're going to hang together. But if we don't win this battle, we're going to hang. 56 people. One gentleman lost 13 children. Several lost their wives and children. Seven lost their lives. That took courage. We don't have it in Augusta. When I talked about education, that $740 million, that is $570 for every citizen of the state of Maine. On welfare, it's $228 per year for every citizen in the state of Maine. Now let me go to energy. This really gets me because there's an answer to it. Like this, we can be buying cheaper energy. There's a gas-fired power plant in Rumford, Maine. They have a contract that they provide electricity to Nepal. One mile down the road, there's a paper company in Chapter 11. One of their biggest problems is energy. This power plant in, in Rumford, a mile away, sells their energy for 2.6 cents to Nepal. 2.6 cents. Now, let me tell you the rest of the story. They're operating at 22% capacity. Folks. It's a sin. It's a sin. <laughs> well, we spend $400 million a year. We're paying above almost 15 cents for power, all, all in. National average, right around 10. It's 400 million per year. That 400 million dollars is 626 dollars for every taxpayer and 308 dollars a year above the national average for everyone who lives in the state of Maine. So in the state of Maine, each and every one of us in this room is spending 1100 six dollars per year above the rest of our fellow Americans. And it doesn't need to be that way. 
All it takes 